Welcome to Latin at Home. I am your host, Kathleen. I have been teaching Latin for over 15 years, and in this series, I'm going to be presenting SAT vocabulary words. I went through thousands of SAT words online and in books and in flashcards, and I sorted through them all, and I pulled out those that had Latin prefixes, suffixes, and roots. And we are going to go through each one and explore its etymology, which will hopefully be helpful in remembering what these words mean. So please hit that like button and subscribe, and let's get started. In this episode, we are going to get started with the prefixes a, ob, the suffix able, and the prefixes ad and ante. These are the words covered in this video. If you'd like to pause here and take note of anything, please do so. And now let's get started with the prefix a. So a as a prefix means not. I only found one SAT word that had this prefix, and it is atypical. So atypical just means not typical or not normal. For example, if you were sitting in a park and a, a gentleman dressed like this came up and sat beside you, this would be considered atypical behavior. Our next prefix is ob, and this means from or away. Our first word of this is abstruse. So this is from, and trudere in Latin means to push. So imagine pushing something away from you, and it's very, very far away. And the farther away it is, the less you can really make it out. And that's because this word means hard to understand. So just imagine something being pushed very far from you to the point that you can barely even see it, meaning that it's very hard for you to understand what it is. Our next word is abstemious. So there's our prefix, and tomatum is actually an alcoholic drink. Now today, this word doesn't mean just staying away from alcoholic drink. It means that you are staying away from overindulging in food or drink. So that is a no to the food and drink. And next we have abstinence. This is actually a similar word. So ab is our prefix. Tenere means to hold. So you're holding something away from you, similar to pushing it away from you. But this is refraining from a particular thing or activity. So you can abstain from food or drink. You can also hear this in the political realm if a congressperson abstains from voting. So abstinence is just refraining from a particular thing or activity. Next we have abstract. This, I think we know this word, so there's our prefix, and it actually comes from trahre, which means to drag off. The word means away from actual concrete ideas or events. So we know this definitely in art. So here's a painting that it, that is concrete. This is a bridge, we know what this is, whereas this painting is more abstract. This idea of abstract can also exist in math. So if you have two cherries, and you add two cherries, you now have four cherries, and that's very concrete. You can see it right in front of you. Whereas dealing with imaginary numbers is more of an abstract mathematical concept. And moving on to a new, this is not a prefix, this is now a suffix. So it's able, it can also appear as an I-B-L-E, and it literally just means able. So it comes from the Latin abilis, meaning ability. So it's the ability to do something. I have one side note about this suffix, and that is whatever the root word is, the definition in English is going to be able to be that root word. So for example, we have affable is our first word. So fari means to speak, so this is able to be spoken to. So easily approached. If you are familiar with the show The Big Bang Theory, there is an episode where Sheldon was learning body language and how to look more approachable, so this is him having his arms open, being approachable, being more affable. And then when he closed them, he was not being affable anymore. Let's look at another word, accessible. This one, I think we know the meaning of this. It is an SAT word, but it's just able to be accessed. Very commonly, we see it on a sign for handicap accessible, wheelchair, wheelchair accessible. Next, we have credible. So this comes from the root credere, which is to believe. So this is able to be believed. So this is worthy of belief. If you're familiar with the movie Miss Congeniality, there is an FBI agent who is posing as a beauty queen. I heard this word used in that movie when I watched it recently, and the director of the pageant was very upset because she didn't think that this FBI agent was credible, that she was believable as a beauty queen because of her behavior. Next we have culpable. So this comes from culpa, which is fault or blame. You might hear the phrase mea culpa. Uh, you definitely hear that a lot on the news and politics when somebody makes a mistake. 
And that is because that person is able to be blamed. That person is at fault. That person is guilty of something. Or the doggy, as the case may be. Fallible. So this comes from the root to deceive. So this is able to be deceived. So this means that you can make mistakes. You can be deceived by information by a person. Most often we hear this word in the negative form, infallible. So not fallible, not able to be deceived. I saw that there was a line of makeup that was called infallible, and I thought that was a great name for it. The idea is that if you use this makeup, you're not going to make mistakes with it. It's going to just be perfect on you. Let's see what our next word is. Habitable. So this comes from the Latin root habitare, to live. So this is able to be lived in. So for example, here is a nice habitable home, as opposed to this shack, which is not habitable. Interminable, hopefully a word that nobody uses about my class. So terminare means to end. So this has the prefix in, which we're going to explore in another video, and that means not. So this is not able to be ended. So if something is ridiculously long and you're like, oh my gosh, this feels like it's never going to end, that is interminable. So there might just be a ridiculously long movie that you're like, how long is this? Or you might be in class just waiting for it to finish. Next, we have negligible. So this comes from neglegre, to neglect. So this is able to be neglected, able to be ignored. So for example, one of these purses is a designer brand, the other one is a knockoff. And you can see a difference in these, but the difference is negligible. It's not a big deal. They look very similar. Tenable is our next word. Teneira is to hold. We saw that a few slides ago. So tenable is able to be held. So this is able to be maintained. This can be in a very physical sense, like you, you know, like a fortress would be tenable. You can maintain that against an attack, but it can also be more of a situation where a situation can be maintained or not maintained. You often see this in a negative form, untenable, so not able to be maintained. And I actually recently heard this on the news where they were talking about a certain area of the country where living there was becoming untenable because the taxes were so high. Next we have tractable. So tractare means to handle. So this is able to be handled, meaning easily controlled. So for example, if you are familiar with the Odyssey, this is from a movie that's based on the Odyssey, and these are the sirens, and the siren song is able to control the men and lure them in. If you haven't read the Odyssey, I highly recommend it. Next we have venerable. So this is from venerari, to venerate or to revere, to show respect for. So this is able to be venerated, worthy of being respected or venerated. This is actually an official title. There's a capital V of this. So specifically in the Catholic Church, once someone has died, that person can be named a venerable. So for example, venerable Father Augustus Tolton. And this is a step on the way to being named a saint. At first you're a venerable, and then you become a blessed, and then finally you are named a saint. And there's a whole process on how you get these different titles. And now we have vulnerable. So this root, vulnerare, to wound, this is able to be wounded. So if you're putting yourself into a vulnerable situation, it means that you can be hurt. For example, this diver is in a very vulnerable situation if any one of those sharks decides that he doesn't want him there. So that's all we have for able. Now we're going on to the prefix odd. So this means to or towards. And I wanted to show you just a list of words that we're going to cover because the AD doesn't always appear. When the D meets another letter, sometimes it changes. So you can see of all of these, the AD only appears twice, but I promise you AD is actually the prefix on these. So for example, this last word, assuage, so odd plus suavis, instead of being ADS, it became ASS. So let's get started. Adherence. So this comes from hairare, to stick to. So adherence is holding fast to something. So this can be very physical, like adhesive, glue, adheres to something. Or it can also be holding fast to or supporting an idea, a set of rules, for example. You adhere to the class rules. And now we have a base. So this comes from basus, meaning short of stature. So this is to try to make someone feel very small. So this is to behave in a way that belittles or degrades. 
So for example, a bully would be trying to abase someone, but I would argue that the bully is abasing himself with that kind of behavior. Next we have accolade. So this is actually a great root because it comes from the word column meaning neck. And it refers to when someone was knighted and the person in authority would lower a sword down toward the neck. So not actually at the neck, it was touched on both shoulders, so it was both sides of the neck. That's the root of the word. Nowadays, it's just any honor. It doesn't have to be knighthood. So any award given in appreciation or out of respect. So I actually found these online. This, these are just accolades that a, a hotel could get, for example. And next we have advocate. So this is a verb and it comes from vocabulary, meaning to call. So this is to speak in favor of or support. It can also be pronounced advocate. So if you are an advocate, you advocate for something. So this can be just an idea. For example, a teacher can advocate for handwritten notes versus typed notes, or you can advocate for a larger cause. For example, you can advocate for the homeless. And I actually chose this because they have the word advocacy right here on their sign, if you look closely. Affluence. So this comes from flow, and it specifically is referring to cash flow. So affluence is an abundance of wealth. You just have money flowing toward you. So for example, this would be the home of an affluent person. This is an example of affluence. Acclaim. This comes from clamare, meaning to shout. So you are shouting in favor of something. You are giving enthusiastic approval of it. You very often hear this with critics and movies. In the summer of 2022, for example, the most critically acclaimed movie was Top Gun Maverick. Haven't actually seen it. I should get on that. And now we have alleviate. So this comes ultimately from lewis, meaning light. This word means to lessen, and it's literally taking a load off your shoulder. It's raising a weight off of you. It's very often used when talking about suffering and negative feelings. So for example, as a student, you are under a lot of stress during the school year, and summer fun is meant to alleviate that stress. Our next word is allude. So this actually comes from the word ludere, meaning to play, because this word means to make reference to something, but you're not doing it directly. You're kind of playing around with the wording or the reference. So you're referring to it, but it's casually or indirectly. A lot of times you'll see this as a noun, illusion. So here's an example of an illusion. So there's a famous image from Karate Kid when he's doing the crane kick, I think that's what it's called. And Disney used that. It doesn't say, you know, here's the Karate Kid. It just uses the imagery. And the idea is that Hercules is going to be as successful as the Karate Kid was in his training and in his battles. And this word assuage comes from suawis, meaning sweet. So this is to make sweeter, so to make milder or less severe. So you can assuage guilt, you can assuage your thirst by drinking, and you can also assuage bad or negative feelings. And that was it for odd. We're on to anti, which is our final prefix for this video. So this word means before. Not to be confused with anti, with an I, they're pronounced the same way in English as prefixes. Sometimes A-N-T-I is pronounced anti, but still we don't want to confuse it. It's not against, that is a different thing. Uh, for example, this is not an SAT word, but uh, A-M, we use this all the time, A-M and P-M. So A-M is anti-meridium, which means before midday. So anti means before. Let's take a look at our first SAT word with this prefix, antebellum. So bellum means war. In this instance, it's specifically referring to the American Civil War. So antebellum means existing before the war. So you'll see a lot of uh, homes that are labeled antebellum homes. These are homes that are from before the Civil War. An antechamber, so a chamber is just a room, so this is a room before a large main room. It doesn't necessarily have to be a smaller room, so for example, uh, this is King Tut's tomb, and you can see the antechamber labeled here. 
And it is a pretty big room, but it's not the main room. So there's a main room, and the one before that is the antechamber. And here's an example of an ancient temple. And you can see the antechamber there is smaller than the main hall. But regardless, it's before it. It's in front of it. So antediluvian, this is a fun word. So diluvian comes from deluvium, meaning deluge. This is referring to the Great Flood. So this is before the Great Flood. It doesn't have to refer specifically to that time period. Today it's just used for anything that is super duper old. So you could, for example, describe this, a VHS tape, as antediluvian. It's just super old, antiquated, not in use. If you're in high school, you might not even know what this little thing is, this compact cassette. Another example of something antediluvian. Anticipate is our final word for the video, and it comes from capre, meaning to take. So this is to take action beforehand. So you realize and understand what's about to happen, and you take action before that happens. <laughs> So recently I was watching this wonderful BBC miniseries of Pride and Prejudice, and it was actually used in there. So there was this gentleman who had a ball, and he was about to ask one of his sisters to play the piano, but another woman anticipated that he was going to do that, and as soon as he mentioned the piano, before he could invite his sister to do it, she just ran up and sat down. And he said, oh, I see you've anticipated me. So we're going to leave it there at the Netherfield Ball. Thank you so much for joining me at Latin at Home. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next SAT vocabulary video.